Welcome to Hands On with, with me, Chris Chinchilla. I've got a little bit of a different camera angle going on here. This will be one of the, this will be the second to last week until I get back into my proper studio. So then I'll be kind of be back in a more familiar layout. Uh, I'm just going to adjust my volume emphasis slightly. So every week I put my hands on. It sounds a bit weird. Get practical. Uh, experiment with, try, I don't know, whatever word, a piece of generally developer-focused technology, or I guess a tool aimed at people with a developer-like mindset. I am Kristen Schiller. You can find more about me at kristenschiller.com, and you can also subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, twitch.tv slash hands-on-with, wherever you are watching this. Uh, please say hi, any comments, or... Uh, anything else in the chat and I will endeavor to take a look at it when I can. I'm still operating on two very small screens so it's not always possible to see everything and I currently have my kind of streaming setup screen down here so <laughs> if you see my big bald head you know what I'm doing. All right let's get to it. So today is the turn of Hammerspoon. Hammerspoon is a Mac OS only tool uh, for automation. Um, there's a lot of actual options available for automation with macOS. You have Apple Script, you have uh, Bash Scripts, you have all sorts of kind of various options here. Um, so why Hammerspoon? There's a powerful automation of OS X, which you call Mac OS now, but uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, a bridge between the operating system, um, I don't know if that means Apple Script or something else, and Lua. Lua, just language of choice. What gives Hammerspoon its power is a set of extensions that expose specific pieces of system functionality to the user. So I think we just get hands on with this and see what happens. Now as a desktop application, uh, Zoom and reading things is always gonna be a little bit problematic. I will try my best to make it as readable as possible. Um, I've already installed the application and then we will get to the getting started guides and things like that. So let's open up Hammerspoon first. I'll just check how it all looks. I can use, uh oh, what's that? <laughs> Always the problem. There we go. I think because I used uh, Homebrew to install it as I have a tendency to do. That should do it. You can see I haven't actually launched it yet. So, okay, all right. So we start with a series of preferences. I think that's visible to everybody, I hope. Unfortunately, when I zoom in on my screen, all my screens zoom in, so I also can't actually see what it looks like on my streaming preview, because that's also zoomed in. <laughs> it gets kind of complicated. So some standard things here. Launch at login, check for updates, show the dock, show the menu, keep the console and crash data. We need to enable accessibility first. So let's do that. Okay, and this invariably means we have to relaunch things. Let's give it a go. Hammer spoon. No, we don't. Oops. So jump there, but anyway. All right, so now what? This on its own is not showing us very much. Let's go back to the documentation and see what else we can do. So out of the box, Hammerspoon does nothing. You need to create a Lua script in Hammerspoon in it. Apologies for the background noise there. And read the getting started guide first. I don't know if the getting started guide will tell us those steps. Ah, okay, click on, I think it might do that. So there should be an icon up here. I actually use um, Bartender to hide all of my menu items because I have quite a lot of them. <laughs> um, open config, okay. Visual Studio, good. I think I may need to zoom in on this when we have some actual syntax. Uh, I wonder if, yeah, that's sort of readable enough, I think. Yeah. Open config. Open the API docs in your browser. That's what extensions. Let's maybe come back to that later. A little. Okay, 
So, hello world. Fancy a hello world. Let, let's start with hello world. <laughs> Keep it simple to begin with. I don't really know any Lua, but so far this syntax I can see here seems, seems all right. All good programming tutorials start with hello world. So bind a keyboard hot key to hello world. All right, fine. Pop that in. I'll zoom in there as well. There we go. I mean, there's not much to look at, but there we go. And save the file, click reload config. Okay. All right, so now if we press this rather <laughs> complex combination of keys. Hello world, nice. So that's in a, I think they're called Toasts? Oh, no, they're called toasts on Android, I'm not sure. So we bind an anonymous function to a hotkey. I mean, I'm interested to know why I would do this and not do this in Apple Script or something like that, but um, I'm not sure. We'll soon find out. I wonder what sort of processes are running in the background. Um, let's see. So if we look here. Yes, that's expected. There's not really much. There was no real spike there, so. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. So that was using some sort of. Not sure, but uh, <laughs> we'll use a Mac OS API instead. So notifications. So it's gonna. Yeah. So again, we reload. Okay, and to do the same. Now I have notifications currently hidden, but yes, we can see it here. Oops, <laughs> and then off it went. <laughs> I was actually interested to know what happens if you click on the notification. Okay, it goes to Hammerspoon, that seems reasonable. Okay, spoons are pre made plugins. Um, let's come back to that in a minute, I think. Let's carry on on this document for now. Introduction to window management. One of the most I mean, useful things you can do with Hammerspoon is to meet the windows on your screen. So this is going to move. Ah, now this is interesting. Any one of you who've watched one of my videos in the past and I'll uh, pop a link here after the live stream, I can't do it when I'm live streaming, to it, it was Raycast, and I'm still using Raycast here. Raycast also has scripted, which is interesting. <laughs> so some of these sorts of features you could do in Raycast and have kind of built in to, uh, to the application. In fact, there's some interesting uh, synchronicity there. I might send them both a message around that. That's kind of interesting. But uh, you could do a script like this with Apple Script or well, not bash, you couldn't really do bash in um, to control windows. Well, maybe, I'm not sure, but you could with Apple Script. But, so this is doing something similar. And if you could use spoons inside a race script, that would be interesting. But anyway, I digress. Um, let's do this. So what I'm wondering is if I want to have multiple, um, I don't know, I guess I can put, Two in here. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. See any errors? Uh, Command Alt Control H. Yeah, that did something. <laughs> it was kind of subtle. Uh, if I guess do it, keep doing it. I guess yeah. And I can use the other shortcut to pop it back. <laughs> okay, good. Nice. So one thing I have missed since I in, uh, started using um, Raycast, I stopped using Mosaic, which used to let me set up a window management tool for Mac OS like many others that let me predefine keyboard shortcuts. And I would use it often to create a 720p window, which is something I currently miss. So I could actually do that with um, Hammerspoon instead. Okay. Just check in on um, 
Everything's running okay in the stream. Yep. And I'll just quickly check in on chat. If you have any comments, please do. I can see a few people are watching. Quick aside on the colon syntax. Sometimes we're using dots in function calls, sometimes we're using colons. Colon syntax means you're calling one of that object's methods. Okay, but what's the... Ah, right, so it's the same thing, but passes something different. Okay, variable life cycle, garbage collection to clean up memory usage, destroyed. Okay, right, that makes sense. Garbage collection gets, I'm not a programmer per se, so. <laughs> it is. Oh, I see, I think. All oh, right, yes, okay. Net hack movement keys. Not quite sure what they are, but whatever. I think I get the impression or the idea, sorry. It seems like a lot of code for something relatively simple, but I think maybe. <laughs> okay. So I think I need a memory of uh, there we go. what does what. Reload. So we'll do okay. So I th I thought it would jump up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm playing a video game now. <laughs> Whee! What happens if I try and do two at once? Uh, yeah, don't know. <laughs> I think whichever one I pressed slightly before the other is actually what happens. Okay. Window size, so ah, window size, nice. Ah, so this is gonna replicate kind of what I have already in Raycast and other tools. So this is, how do you type left? Ah, the arrow key, right. So you can see down here to here, okay. Uh, reload the config. So it's the same. Now I just want to write. <laughs> okay. All right. Just, there was a weird jump there. No, what happened? There? Oh, yes, I used it. There you go. Feels. It's interesting because if I do it with the raycast and equivalents, it just jumps. If I do it with, it kind of slides. I don't know. Maybe that's just me imagining things, but that's how it feels. Okay. And then the right. Yeah. Okay, multi-window layouts. To keep several apps open all the time and have the windows arranged a particular way. Okay. I mean, this is not really gonna work because I'll have to have all these applications. And this is actually interesting. This kind of shows, uh, for example, there is no iTunes anymore. It's music and things like that. So, although Raycast seems to recognize it. I don't know if that would actually work from Apple script perspective, but um, we'll see. Um, so I may not give that one a miss, but you can see here things like the laptop screen is defined as a variable. And then we have the window layout, so send it to that screen. So if you had two screens, I kind of do, but I don't really want to send things over to my other screen right now. Be a bit messy. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's interesting here because you can see things like this. You can find these names with the name method, but I would imagine that there's no auto completion. So you'd have to kind of uh, know a lot of these things and just sort of run them. And I don't know how you can debug it. I'm not sure. Um, maybe we'll look at that in a minute. Um, API docs, yes, name of the screen. Okay, let me move down here, window filters. What have we got here? Have hotkeys bound in certain context for applications, but not others. Okay. So filter certain windows. So move my window to the left, but not uh, Visual Studio Code, for example. Um, maybe, I'm not sure if that's quite what it means. Let's see. Window filter module allows this, enabling you to create complex window groupings and behaviors with filter rules and event watchers. 
Copying and pasting content from Safari to messages. All links are expanded. I don't know if that's strictly true, but um, well, I don't use messages, that's probably why. Uh, it's hard to test this then, I suppose. <laughs> so don't, I even have, I do have messages, but I don't know if it's actually set up. Let's see, I could try, I suppose. Okay, let's see. <laughs> so, add that in. So I think this is too shrunk, but we can kind of look at the code here instead. Um, if it contains, okay. And then if it's this application, then clean pasteboard function. I don't know if they, oh, clean pasteboard is this function above. Okay, well, let's see. So, we haven't actually enabled the change yet, so I'm not really sure what this. I get the feeling that uh, this may be an old problem, but <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, okay, and copy. Yeah, I get the impression that that's not really working anymore because it's not actually a problem anymore. And not. What happened there? Strange. Not a problem anymore, but um, I think I understand how that could be useful anyway. Oops. What's going on? Uh, there we go. Okay, what else? Configuration reloading. Ah, okay. That <laughs> gets a bit meta. Although, I mean, I don't know if a keyboard shortcut versus going up there is that much quicker, but. Um, so that would reload it periodically or when the file changes, yep. Okay. I think maybe we'll look at these spoons in a minute. So this I suppose is something that people add to their spoons in Hammer Spoon. Um, oh no, it's an actual spoon itself. Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Application menus. Build a hotkey that cycles Safari between multiple user agent strings. Does that mean by when? When? Oh, hotkey. Okay. Uh, all right. Fine. Let's give it a go. Mm. Just to know what it's leveraging underneath the hood here, but um, okay. So let's reload, and it's Command Alt Control Seven. So we should be able to see. Yeah, here's our user agent here. Uh, yeah. Well, that looks like something changed, and ah, that's interesting though. That. Yeah, I think again, these examples are very old. Um, let's, uh, well, it works, but yeah, I think this is a very old example. And again, it's interesting because how do you know what the options are? Uh, uh, find menu item. String. How do you know what these are? This is the interesting thing. Hmm. It's hard to know. How do you know what to pick? I suppose the other aspect here is knowing when things don't work. I'm guessing Apple changing things is is also gonna cause Hammerspoon to break quite a lot. I don't know. Um, some limitations there, I guess, which it's hard for them to do much about, but um, that's the case. Menu bar item, I might have a look at this, and then I think um, I will look into the spoons. 20 minutes, yeah. 
so this is going to add a new menu. So I currently do this with um, Alfred and, and Raycast and things like that. Let's see. Okay. So where is this going to add a menu item? Uh, this somewhere. We'll find out soon. This is where we see if Big Sur has broken this. A, ah, there we go. Huh. It works. <laughs> uh, no, it'd be nice and you could set a notification, of course. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So here we can react to system events, which makes sense. Um, I don't know if I want to do this right now, but uh, let's try it anyway. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm not 100% sure what to expect when this happens. Let's see, so when I select Finder, I mean, it's kind of what I expect to happen anyway. So I'm not really sure what's different there. Uh, to be honest with you, but yeah. The Wi-Fi networks. So this is kind of like, uh, I think many, many years ago, Mac OS had uh, locations. In fact, I feel like uh, Mac OS had it up until relatively recently. Um, is it locations or profiles or something like that? Um, I don't know if it still has it. It was mostly based on network. Uh, let's see. Location. Yeah, no, it does still exist. I can't remember really what you do with it anymore. There was a way I would say when I'm here, just use Ethernet. When I'm here, use Wi Fi, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you could kind of do something interesting here. Like when I'm on the home Wi Fi, then. Um, well, let's let's try this. I will get rid of this caffeine one. I think. Uh, get rid of both of those. So SSID I am currently on is okay. So what's this going to do? This is going to set the volume to 25. My volume is currently, um, let's set it to zero. <laughs> Should be actually. Okay. That should go away. Yep. So do we have to just join though? That's my only. <laughs> I don't want to switch networks right now. <laughs> yeah, new SSID. Hmm. Uh, huh, I don't really know how to test that one. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to test that one on a live stream, but um, yeah, okay, USB events. Okay, there's a lot of things here. Ah, so running Apple Script. Okay, so it can also control Apple Script. So what is it actually using? Well, I'm quite intrigued with drawing on the screen. Interesting. Sending messages, automating with URLs. So I'm very interested to know what is happening under the under the surface. So let's have a look at some of these spoons first. Are these the yes? Okay, this is what we actually want here. Okay. Um. Another clock. Brightness on all displays. It's interesting. Just the Asana. So this is actually starting to be a lot like Raycast. Um, Big Daily Bonjour Launcher, Brew Info, Calendar. I'm wondering what I want to try. Tiny Countdown, that could be useful. How do you set it? I'm not sure. Um, actually, I forgot to check what you do with spoons. Spoons. 
here. What is a spoon? How do I install a spoon? Should be distributed as zip files. Download, uncompress it, and double click on it. Okay, it's easy enough. Yep. Let's go to be ready. Compress it. Double click on it. Something happened. Do we need to reload? I don't know. Might as well. Uh, quite sure what to expect though. <laughs> Uh, don't really know what I'm supposed to do with it though. Um, I think, ah, I think I understand. So spoons, I think you can then trigger in other applications. So I would do something like, let's tidy this up a bit. Let's, uh, all of these and uh, yeah, let's do this one. So I guess we just do this, I suppose. Uh, two, two. Huh? see what happens. Uh, reload. Hmm. No. Now here we can see how debugging works actually. Uh, okay, maybe we've missed something, I guess. Uh, how do you use a spoon? Okay, loading a spoon. Ah, right. Add to your config file. Uh, so I think that's enough. And what's it called? Countdown, I guess. At all, you're responsible for calling it start method. Okay, I don't see a start method. I guess that's this. We'll see. Okay, no, uh huh, console again. Seems like the same problem. Maybe there's an example. No. Uh, add this to your config. The loading a spoon. Should take this form name. I feel like that should be it, but it doesn't seem to be, and I'm not really sure what I'm missing. Um, hmm. Don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Not really. 
be made on object returned by a constructor. I have missed something here. So I'm not really sure what. Because uh, I kind of saw this in the Um, there was something about the I'm sure there was. Hmm. Uh, there was something above when it was talking about the differences between. Here we go. Uh, hmm. Oh. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> And that's what we're doing actually, so... I actually wonder if... If this should be added below? There, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, let's keep that console open. We can clear it. That'd be nice. <laughs> no. Yeah. See, the spoon is loaded, so it's something else. Index a nil value. Hmm. We could check. Looks like I'm not the only one to. <laughs> uh, to know exactly I don't know yeah, there's a lot of things there okay well I'm not 100% sure what to do with that um, I wanted to dive into this actually really interested to know oh it's the same Ah, okay. Yeah. Really fascinating to, fa blah, fascinated to know how this is working. It's kind of interesting what they've opted to make core functions as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting. A lot of very interesting methods here. I really would like to know what's going on beneath the surface uh, just says with oh, it's 10 APIs. I don't know. <laughs> um, hmm. So it's objective C and it looks like even the extensions or the spoons, sorry, are also objective C, I think. Uh, where do we find them? Yeah, it's all objective C. I see can brew, yeah. Interesting. It still seems reasonably active as well. There was a release 16 days ago. Um, it's kind of a lot of, I get the feeling it's one of those things, there's a lot of potential, but there's a lot of setup to do. Whereas other applications have this tendency to provide more of that for you. And um, 
but then you're kind of stuck with what's available. So this is sort of what Raycast is doing. Although, in in honesty, to extend Raycast, you also have to and uh, Alfred and all of these, you have to still write extensions. Whereas at least with Hammerspoon, the the customization is kind of it's not standard, but it's all in the same place and the same way. I guess is what I mean. Maybe if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, So it's yeah, it's very interesting. I I'm struggling now to think of what is something I want to do. Um, so the making a 720p window would be something I would be interested in doing. Um, let's get back to there was the left right one. Let's try and take it from there. So that's something I would actually like to do. It's a sort of relatively simple example, but it's something I would like. Uh, let's then reload. So this should work again. Yeah, see there is that odd kind of... Uh... So, um... so effectively actually this is relatively straightforward, I think. DP, I always forget. It is 720, 1280 by 720, there we go. So, uh... So it would be the width and the height are kind of easy. I think I've already forgotten what the measurements were. <laughs> 720 by 1280, that's it. Okay, so that should be 1280. Oops. 1280. And that would be 720. But then we kind of want to put it in the the middle. Um, hmm. I feel like there's a very simple calculation for this that <laughs> I don't exactly know. Uh, I think it's actually it was kind of what was here? Maybe? I don't really know. This is where I embarrass myself with my poor maths knowledge. Live. But whatever. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Reload. Well, something happened. Hard to know if that's correct though. It's <laughs> a problem. Uh, I feel like there is some kind of application for telling you that, but it's the problem. It's hard to know if that's correct. Uh, feels like it might be. Actually, I think I could use Snagit maybe here to prove or disprove this maybe. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> this is the problem with installing things from uh, Homebrew. Okay. Okay. So Where's the... Sure, where? Uh, hmm. That's strange. <laughs> where's the, where's the uh, capture gun? Oh, I'm going mad slash blind. Okay. Um, do believe we can... No, that's the width is not quite right. The height is right. That could be to do with the constraints of um, what happened. But yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, 
We could also just say, um, do something very arbitrary here and just do, where is it, this one here. Yeah. For now. <laughs> and work that out properly another time. Correct now, but still didn't really pop up in the right place. Oh, I think I know why. But anyway, we get the idea, and I think that is now correct. Yes, that is correct. Okay, good. So that does actually work. So that's a valid use case I have for Hammer Spoon. All right, coming up to 40 minutes. I think that's a good time to wrap up. So. Quite a lot you can do here. I'm still wondering what I have and I need to do with it. I actually find it quite an interesting uh, program, a project to contribute to. I don't know much Objective-C, but it'd be interesting to learn, but even documentation or something like that. I might keep it around and see what I can figure out, especially with some of the, the spoons. But um, I kind of like what's there. So we have hammerspoon.org. Maybe that's one contribution I can do in the first place, is get uh, HTTPS working. Oh, it does, it just isn't set up, okay. Um, it is completely open source, as you can see here. Reasonably popular, a good number of um, committers, I think. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Um, I'd have to have a bit of a think about what I could do with it, but it's certainly useful. So that was Hammerspoon. Next week on Hands On, what are we back with? Let me just, uh, oops, all my windows just flew all over the place. There we go. Um, yes, next week. So 3rd of May at, at 14.30 UTC, 15.30, oh, 16.30 Central European time. And everyone else can work it out through some kind of calculator. I'll be looking at Zoho Flow. Another one of these kind of no-code, low-code, Zapier, Ift type alternative applications. Uh, but from the people at Zoho, who are a company you've probably heard of, but dismissed. But actually I have been discovering through various applications. Actually makes some quite nice stuff. So I'm interested to see what Zoho Flow is like and what you can do with it. Another automation option, but for everybody, as opposed to just macOS users. If you have enjoyed the show, please subscribe, please uh, rate and review. Please leave a comment. Nice to see comments, etc., etc. You can find more about me at christianchiller.com. You can find my Twitter handle, which is at Chris Chinch, and many other things. And until next week, thank you very much for joining me.